Okay, it's time to move beyond the single neuron. Let's go. So first, let's quickly revisit the neuron that you know pretty well by now. You've got the inputs that are multiplied by the weights, they're summed together, to which a bias is added, and that grand total can be passed through an activation function. Now let's take all that work to be represented by a single circle like this. That seems more manageable, right? Now every yellow circle you see will do all of the work on the previous slide. What if you had many of these neurons instead of one? Each one of these neurons could then learn a different line of best fit, and this is known as a layer of neurons. Now let's add an example input, like the one you're trying to predict from this new example. Here, the grey circle on the left represents a single input. Each neuron in this first input layer of neurons will sample the input values, but now you've got three outputs. When you're trying to predict a single value, what's going on there? Well, you can simply add another layer of neurons in this case, a layer of just one neuron in it, which is fully connected to the previous input layer, meaning each one of those neurons' outputs become its inputs. And this single neuron then outputs a single number as needed for our use case. So let's rebuild your model architecture to do this instead and see how it performs. Okay, so head back to the part of the code that constructs the model as shown. Here you update the first model.add line to have three units representing the three neurons you want in the input layer. Finally, you can add another model.add with another densely connected layer with a single neuron in it by setting units to one. Checking the output of model.summary, you can see the model architecture has been updated. It now contains two dense layers that are connected to each other. The first with three neurons, the second with one. It should also be noted that this network now has 10 trainable parameters, which you can tweak to learn the input data as you have more neurons. Now running the code in its current state gives you this lovely not a number value as an output, abbreviated to NAN. As you've added more neurons to the network, the initial learning rate that you chose of 0.01 .01 is probably too high, and you'll need to use a smaller one to adjust each of these neurons by. If you think about it, Lots of smaller changes is like a single big change. So head back to your train function and update the learning underscore rate to be 0.001 instead. Running the new code, it now works again, but it seems like a similar loss as before in the 30s. In all the code written so far, you've not specified any activation functions, which are very important features of neurons in order to help it to predict non-linear features, which is why these three neurons are acting no better than a single linear neuron. By using an activation function, neurons in the first layer will only produce an output when they cross some threshold instead of always producing an output value. Let's try using the ReLU activation for the neurons on the input layer only. The output layer remains unchanged as you always want that one to produce some output value prediction. Head back to the line of code where you add your first input layer. Here you can add a new property called activation to specify an activation function of your choice. And here of course you'll ask it to use the ReLU activation for all neurons in this layer. Let's see how well this code runs. Okay, so this is heading in the right direction. Your average error loss is now around 18. Remember, your exact result will vary due to the random weight assigned to the neurons at the start of training. If you are seeing a really high loss in the hundreds, refresh and try again. It is possible that you get super unlucky with the initial weight it chooses. But why did this lead to better results? Let's visualize what could be going on here. By using more than one neuron, you can essentially approximate the curve data with many lines combined that are each learning different parts of the curve space. In this example, three lines are calculated, so three neurons with ReLU activation functions would be needed for the granularity you see here for these seven training points. Finally, you need one extra neuron that will tie together the outputs from the first three to then output a single value that can actually make a prediction of the output value. This output neuron passes through the final number it predicts, so no activation function is needed in this instance. So it seems like adding more neurons did the trick. What if you add even more? Let's update the code to try 20 for the input layer instead of three. Even better, your average error loss is now five. Dare you try 200? Certainly it's still going down, but 200 neurons seems like quite a lot for this simple task. What if you try adding more layers instead? 
Currently, your model looks like this. Note that not all 200 neurons have been drawn, but imagine 200 are in the first layer. Let's change the model architecture to look more like this. Now you have an added a layer that's neither an input or an output layer. This is known as an hidden layer. Let's change the input layer to have 100 neurons and the hidden layer to have 100 neurons and the output layer to still have one neuron. Now that these are the same number of neurons as before, but arranged in a new way. Also notice that all layers are still densely connected, which as you can see, creates a huge number of samplings between the first two layers that have many neurons in each. Let's update the code. First, update the input layer to have 100 neurons. Next, add a new line of code to add the hidden layer using model.add. Here, we specify another 100 neurons that will also be activated using ReLU. And then finally, your output layer has not changed. It's still a single neuron. The only difference is that it's now connected to the hidden layer instead of the original input layer. Checking the model summary now, you can see the trainable model parameters has grown significantly with over 10,000 trainable parameters. Let's run the code. Oh no, it looks like it's shooting off to the moon on error loss. Let's think about this for a second. When you last added more neurons, you had to change the learning rate and you've added another layer here. So maybe it's wise to tweak the learning rate again. Update the learning underscore rate to be 0 0.0001 instead, as you have more layers in your network. Okay, so here you get a final loss of 2.9, but looking at the loss values for the last few epochs, they were on target to still go down further. It seems now that you're using a more complex network, adding more epochs could actually help. Let's set epochs to back to 200 to see if we can do better with this network. And that looks a lot better. Average error loss is now just 1.4. You can see that the prediction of the input of a seven is essentially 49, which is what you wanted. However, in order to do that, you use an exponentially higher number of weights joining the neurons together. In fact, the current model has over 10,401 trainable parameters if you check the model summary. Let's start reducing things to see how it copes with fewer neurons, but the same number of layers. And it's actually a case of trial and error to pick new values. As you get more experience, you may have a better inclination of what sensible values to start with for a certain data set. Here, update the first layer to have 25 neurons and five in the hidden layer. As expected, the loss went up a little, but not a huge amount. And you managed to reduce the number of trainable parameters in your model from over 10,000 to just 186. Here, an input of seven gets 49.39, which for an estimate is not too bad and may be acceptable for your needs. Let's take a look at the results so far. Okay, so here are the recordings I got when trying each of the different model architectures in this session. Your numbers will vary for the loss, however, due to the random initialization of the neurons, but should be somewhat similar. You can clearly see, however, that while more neurons and layers tended to give better results, it comes at a cost of processing power and you may actually favor a slightly less accurate model that's 100 times faster to run and takes up a smaller memory footprint. At this point, you might want to try tweaking the number of neurons in different layers, the learning rate, epochs, and even the batch size to see if you can squeeze any more performance from this model architecture. The act of exploring these parameters, which are known as the hyperparameters of the model, can take time and practice to get really good at. One other thing to try at this point would be to try and predict a value outside of the example input data range and see what you notice. Okay, so trying this out, your input training data had values from one to 20. So let's try 25, which gives a prediction of 575. The value you actually wanted was 625. It's sort of close, but you can see already with exponential data like this, it's already falling short, just five values higher than what it's seen. What about negative numbers? Let's try minus five. Here you get a prediction of 3.35, which is very wrong indeed, as minus five times minus five is plus 25. Currently, this model does not know about negative numbers. You would need some examples of that for it to learn from to get this right. Consider changing your input generated data to see if that solved the problem. So my point for bringing this up is that a machine learning model cannot predict things it's not had a chance to learn from. And well-trained models will try to generalize the best they can 
for that given range of data that it's seen in an attempt to predict new values of the same range. In the next section, you'll see how you can expand the knowledge you've learned to handle data with thousands of inputs in the case of images, where each pixel is a feature, and instead of regression to predict a number, you'll solve a classification problem to predict what class an image belongs to you. See you in the next section.